Now we're, all of our gun parts have been soaked and cleaned, we're actually going to start the reassembly. During reassembly, we use the fusion grease uh, exclusively, just because of the fact that it does not react with the isocyanite, so it's not going to cause you any problems with the gun itself, uh, as well as it is a low viscosity grease, so it makes sure that that gun's going to operate freely, there's not going to be any restriction due to a thick grease binding parts inside. We start by putting a, a small dollop of grease onto the work surface and that way we can just kind of dip our fingers in and smear it around the O-rings as we do the reassembly on the gun. So to begin with we're going to install the muffler back into the bottom of the gun handle. And just uh, to recap we do need a half inch wrench to insert this and tighten that back up. The gun body is aluminum, so we do want to make sure that we don't over tighten any of the fittings going into the gun body so that we don't damage the threads. So now we're going to insert the trigger piston back into the gun body. The trigger piston does have to go into the gun body in one orientation. There is a kind of a cupped end at the one end. That needs to be facing the back of the gun itself. And we just use a little tool to give that a push and make sure that it's fully seated into the end of the gun body. And now we'll insert our spring and the rear cap. And again, tightening the rear cap does require a one inch wrench and also be cautious not to over tighten this fitting. Now we're going to insert the air piston into the back of the gun body and again we're going to apply some grease to the o-rings just to make sure that this is going to slide freely within the gun body. The air piston itself has two flat sides and they made up with the flat sides that are located on the gun handle so make sure that these do line up as you're inserting the piston into the gun body. Give it a good push just to make sure that it is fully seated. So now we're going to insert the mixing chamber into the gun body. The mixing chamber does have a labeling on the top of the chamber itself that shows you the A and the B sides. And you want to make sure that you do insert it correctly so that it is going to line up the A side to the A side and the B side to the B side. And we will apply a liberal coat of grease onto the mixing chamber again to make sure that this is going to slide freely within the gun body. And again, now you can see that the writing is facing upwards on the gun handle. Now we're going to start with the reassembly of our check valve and uh, filters. Before starting, make sure that you've ins installed your O-rings located here and here. And then we'll start by dropping our check ball into the housing. We'll insert the spring on top of the check ball. And then we'll insert the screw into the housing. Now when inserting the screw, make sure that you do not screw the screw down as tight as it possibly will go. Essentially what we want to do is make sure that the screw is uh, level with the surface of the housing itself. If you screw the screw down too deep, you can actually restrict the flow of the material through the gun which can cause pressure imbalance issues on the machine. Now we'll insert our filter screen over top of the housing. And now our check ball and filter screen is ready for insertion into the main gun fluid section. We want to apply a liberal coat of grease again to the O-rings before inserting it in, into the gun body so that it again will be easy to remove when it comes time to do your next cleaning on the gun. And make sure that you insert the A-side into the A-side and the B-side into the B-side. And now we'll insert our A-side check ball. We'll continue on with assembling our side block seals. So to begin with, we're going to install the O-rings back onto the housing.
Then we'll insert our spring into the main house, housing body. And then we'll push the side block seal into the housing itself. Again, we want to make sure that we do put a little bit of grease onto the O-ring on the side block seal, again, for easy disassembly down the road when we need to do our next cleaning. Now we're going to put our side block seal into the main gun body. Again, putting a good liberal coat of grease over top of the O-rings and making sure that we put the A side into the A side and the B side into the B side. We do not want to seat these completely as we need to have space to have the mixing chamber slide in between them prior to assembly. Now we'll insert the B or the A side. Now in the fluid manifold, we want to make sure that we do have uh, our O-rings inserted back into the manifold body. They are again located here, here, and we also need to reinsert our air knife fitting as well. With the air knife, we generally start by bottoming that fitting out completely and then coming back out about a quarter of a turn just to make sure that we do get some airflow and then we will adjust the air knife once we actually start to use the gun to get it into the perfect position. Now we're going to take the main fluid section and we're going to slide it onto the gun body over top of our already installed mixing chamber. Now when installing we want to make sure that obviously the check valves and uh, filters are actually facing downwards on the handle. And this fitting here which just needs to be hand tight. Now we're going to insert our uh, retaining ring for the side block seals. And in the retaining ring there is one nylon o-ring that we need to have. So we want to make sure that that o-ring is in place and it is located here. We will apply some grease to the threads again just to make sure that this is going to be easy to disassemble again in the future. And again this fitting is just installed hand tight. And the last piece that we need to install on the gun is going to be our air cap. And again, this fitting is just installed hand tight. Now that we've got our gun completely assembled, we will reattach it to the fluid manifold on our hose set. So that was Brandon, our tech guy here at Pinnacle West in Abbotsford, BC, showing us how to take apart the Fusion Air Purge gun, take out all the O-rings and what he would basically do before he soaked it in all solve in the crock pot at 150 degrees for a couple hours at least. Clean up all the parts with paper towel, air, an air gun, make sure they're all basically surgically clean. If you want your gun to work as well as it should from the factory, the cleaner the parts, the better. So David Knott here at Pinnacle, that was Brandon's demonstration of how to take care of your Fusion Air Purge gun. Thanks for watching.